This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 207. Are You Making These Mistakes With Your Sleep? Part two, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, including Nerd Fitness, Ben Greenfield Fitness, Steve Pavlina, and many more. If there are any authors that you read but would like narrated for you, come by and let us know. You can get in touch with us at oldpodcast.com or on our Facebook group. The shortcut link to that is at oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Just as a quick reminder, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, you'll probably wanna stop and check out yesterday's episode first. That's episode 206. But for the rest of you, let's hear part two of the post and continue optimizing your life. Are You Making These Mistakes With Your Sleep? Part two, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. How to get better sleep. We have a circadian rhythm, a daily biological clock that ebbs and flows throughout the day. Our body uses stimuli and our own activity to produce certain hormones at certain times to make our body more prepared for the required functions at that time. For example, alertness versus restfulness. Look at it from an evolutionary perspective. Way back in the day, which was a Wednesday, when the sun rose, our bodies are signaled, the day has begun, get cracking. We reduce the hormones that make us sleepy and produce more hormones that allow us to do the things that need to get done. As the sun went down, our body starts to produce more melatonin, which produces that sleepy feeling and encourages us to rest or recover. Our only option for light back then was a candle or a campfire. If that went out, we'd have moonlight and nothing else. While sleeping, our bodies knew to cut back on urine production, decrease body temperature, decrease heart rate, and decrease muscle activity. Our brains are still highly active during our sleeping though. Unfortunately, these days, our bodies aren't tied to the rise and fall of that giant ball of gas above us. Instead, we can use electricity, alarm clocks, computer screens, smartphone screens, and all other sorts of outside stimuli to adjust our natural sleeping schedule. This means that our bodies often have no effing clue what time it is. Here's how we can get back to our roots, not to be confused with the roots. Trying to get to bed sooner or fall asleep sooner? Limit your exposure to the blue glow of your computer screens, TV screens, and phones later in the evening. Our bodies look at blue light and think, sun is up, sky is blue, more energy. Conversely, lights with a red or orange hue are more reminiscent of a campfire or candle. If you are somebody who has to spend time on your computer at night, consider installing a program like F-Lux. It syncs with the sunrise and sunset in your time zone, gradually shifting your screen's hue from blue and bright to red and dim. I've been using the app for over a week now and have quickly adjusted to it. Purchase Old Man Blue Blocker Glasses, which limits the colors your eyes are exposed to after the sun has gone down. Add two charisma points for style too. A tip of the hat to my buddy Anthony for this one. Consider purchasing red light bulbs to install in your bedroom. Consider getting blackout curtains for your bedroom windows, especially if you live in a city. Living in downtown Nashville, there's always something bright and shiny happening outside my window. It wasn't until I purchased super dark curtains to cover up my windows that I noticed an improvement in my falling asleep time. No TV in bed. This might be incredibly difficult for you if you've been falling asleep to TV for years. Instead of falling asleep with the blue glow of a TV at the foot of your bed, read a book. Trust me, it will put you right to sleep. Get in the habit of reading fiction. Reading puts me to sleep within a few minutes most nights, though only if I'm reading fiction. When reading nonfiction, my mind starts to race with all of the new ideas and things I could be working on. Either read real books or read on a Kindle, but no iPads. Buy the right type of mattress for you. I slept on a soft mattress with two mattress pads for a few months years ago and wondered why I woke up with lower back pain every day. Turns out my back was jacked up and the soft mattress made things even worse. Since switching to a firm mattress, I wake up without back pain. Lesson learned here. I'm not smart. A lot of this can depend on how you sleep. Are you a side sleeper, back sleeper, stomach sleeper? Turns out there's some evolutionary reasons why some styles work better than others. 
Personally, I use the half military crawl position outlined by Tim Ferriss. Have allergies? Try a hypoallergenic pillowcase. Your allergies could be affecting you while you sleep and having the proper pillowcase can make a world of difference. How to get more sleep. So we've covered how to get better sleep. What if you also need to get more of it? In order to start getting more sleep, sleep must become more of a priority. If you constantly stay up too late because things need to get done, evaluate how your time is spent after work. Seriously, think about it. Are you doing the important tasks first? Or are you messing around on the internet and not starting your tasks until late in the evening? Are you watching late night shows long after they become enjoyable simply because your DVR records them? Are you checking your smartphone while in bed, watching Vine videos, or using your laptop to watch more shows you don't really care about on Netflix? Yes, I understand we have parents who read nerd fitness and have to stay awake and function on minimal sleep. I commend you and wish you luck. However, for many of us, less sleep is often a result of disorganized priorities and poor use of our time. Here are the best practical tips for giving you the greatest chance at getting into bed earlier. One, don't drink caffeine after lunch if possible. Caffeine can have an effect up to six hours after consumption. We love caffeine for many reasons, in moderation. However, you wanna make sure it's not consumed too late or your body will revolt. Two, turn off the electronics sooner. I have to enforce a laptops closed by 11 p.m. or a TV off after 10 p.m. rule on many nights or I never get to bed. I get lost in internet land far too easily. Putting in actual barriers really helps. If you find yourself checking Facebook and Twitter and other sites incessantly, block yourself from those sites after a certain time. Three, stop watching TV shows. DVRs can be helpful, but it's so easy to record shows without a second thought and then we end up spending way too much time watching TV. I recently cut out three-fourths of the shows I was recording on my DVR. Now, when I go to it, there are only the shows I actually enjoy, Parks and Rec, The League, The Walking Dead, and my TV watching time has dropped significantly. Four, shift things by 15 minutes every week. If you wanna get to bed sooner, don't just try to get to bed an hour earlier than normal you'll probably lie in bed for that whole hour wondering why you can't fall asleep, stressing yourself out and making things worse. I shifted my pattern by waking up 15 minutes earlier and getting to bed 15 minutes sooner. Then I repeated that process over a series of weeks. Eventually, you can shift your bedtime by an hour or two, but do it gradually. How to wake up better. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Are You Making These Mistakes With Your Sleep? by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'll read part three tomorrow as promised. I really, really like this section of Steve's post. There are so many things I wanna say, but maybe I'll save them for tomorrow and Thursday's episodes. I love that he's promoting to do things gradually. If you wanna try waking up an hour earlier and you start doing that immediately without gradually incorporating this into your lifestyle, You may find that you'll get sick or you're not gonna be able to perform nearly as well as you normally would. But just 15 minutes earlier, now that's not super significant. But over time, as he said, you build on that. And when Steve talked about the sun rising and the sun setting, we do find that those that follow a normal schedule, our stress hormones do rise first thing in the morning, coinciding with the sun rising. And then they typically fall during the evening hours when we're trying to get to sleep. There's also this slight dip in our stress hormones that occurs between the hours of 1 and 3 or 4 p.m. Many health professionals claim that our bodies are actually preparing for a mid-afternoon nap. In fact, in many countries, they actually take this time to shut things down and give themselves time to rest. So if you're ever finding yourself sleepy right after lunch, it may not be your fault. It may just be because your stress hormones are taking a nosedive at that point and your body's preparing yourself for a nap. If you're able to, without disrupting your work or your school or your lifestyle, go ahead and take a 20-minute snooze. But what we're also finding, which is really interesting, is when we study folks who don't work during the day, but rather work the night shift, they are at an increased risk for disease. The theory is that our bodies are built to be awake during the day and asleep at night, but by messing with that rhythm, we increase our risk for disease. But again, there's definitely more I wanna say about this, but I'll save it for tomorrow and Thursday's show. 
Now, don't forget, if you want to suggest authors or get in contact with us for any reason, you can visit oldpodcast.com. But we also have a Facebook group where it's even easier to get in contact. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Or you can search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts and request to join from there. We also give away books in the Facebook group. So a little more reason to join. Again, the shortcut link that'll take you straight to it is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. All right, that's enough from me for today. I hope you're having a great week so far. I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.